Now with inflation at 8.6% and climbing, you're going to need some help to get back to financial safety. Call them and Nova Gold's experts will share their knowledge of gold IRAs so you don't have to worry about a thing. And if you're quick, they're giving away an incredible one-tenth ounce American gold proof coin with every qualifying IRA or 401k rollover. You can't go wrong with Nova Gold. Call the team now on 877-646-5347 to find out more or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. Hi, and welcome to Bill and Bess radio show number two. I hope you are having a wonderful Saturday afternoon. I'm, we wanted to begin this segment with something of a follow-up of last week's, and that is called, this segment is called Go Woke, Go Broke, which is a term that President Trump coined because of all the companies that are going woke and going broke. Uh, the most recent is, of course, Bud Light. And now the latest news on Bud Light is that Costco retailer has decided to pull Bud Light from the shelves. Oh, <laughs> yeah. they lowered the price of Bud Light, as somebody said, almost giving it away. And if you know anything about Costco, Costco has a little star that they put on the upper right hand corner of the price marker in their stores which indicates that when this sells out, we're not carrying it again. And Bud How Light did you figure that out? has earned, because I, I read, I read, I read the article. Right. <laughs> so, but, and Bud Light has earned a star from Costco. And in another go, go broke, um, Ben and Jerry's ice cream, which is, a, had been a very popular ice cream, came out with a statement just before July 4th, that the United States was founded on land stolen from indigenous peoples and has called for giving it back. So a tribal chief who used to live in the land in Vermont, do you know what corporation is headquartered in there? Would be the headquarters of Ben and Jerry has said, call me. I'm ready to make a deal to get my land back. We have always wanted our land back and we're happy to cut a deal with Ben and Jerry's. Well, good. Good. Indian tribes have a lot of money. And, and now they might have a lot of land with a very valuable ice cream <laughs> business on it. I say, go Chief Stevens. <laughs> we'll, we'll be thinking about you. I don't eat Ben and Jerry's ice cream, but I know a lot of other people do. Uh, it's one of those, like I said, go woke, go broke. President Trump has some wonderful sayings. Um, and uh, in other news, when our esteemed Department of Injustice is criticized of being unjust, they decide to prove us right. And what I, <laughs> with their next move, but what I'm talking about is Gal Luft, who is the whistleblower that uh, James Comer was talking about. He's actually the informant. He was actually an FBI informant who is come out and confirmed all of the information that the IRS wish whistleblower who is going to testify by the way before Congress this coming Wednesday Gal Luft has now after he spoke out he did a video speaking out saying he could confirm this information because he worked for CEFC the Chinese the same corporation that paid five million dollars to Joe and five million dollars to Hunter and can confer with um, confirm and can confirm the information has found himself indicted under the FARA <laughs> under the emergency <laughs> indictment <laughs> rule the FARA Act which isn't that what, what they got um, Manafort on was the FARA Act and uh, some other Trump people were charged with FARA Act 
Um, in any case, they, so he's been charged with that and a few other things that they, I don't have any faith. I have no faith in our Justice Department, do you? <laughs> yeah, faith that they'll do the wrong thing at this point. <laughs> it's like I said, they keep proving us right. They call us um, conspiracy theorists, but so far, I don't think of anything we've said that's been proven wrong. No, no. no not through this whole thing, not since COVID started. Yeah. Yeah. FARA, in case you didn't know, is the Foreign Agents Registration Act. And if you were working for, uh, um, you you know, if you're working for another uh, country, you're, you're supposed doing the to... bidding of another country. Yeah. You have to register as a foreign agent. Yeah. And apparently he didn't do that. Um, he was initially arrest arrested. He had, had been under indictment before, but now they're just going to make sure that he can't testify anymore. <laughs> and I, you know, I don't know who is keeping Mr. Shapley, the IRS whistleblower safe, but he is supposed to testify on Wednesday. We just, we can only hope that um, nothing happens to him. Wednesday. So that's six days, seven days. Uh, <laughs> you can't count. Wednesday. So today is being Saturday. Saturday. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, four Wednesday, days four away. days. <laughs> I'm not the brightest bulb, and I admit it. <laughs> so, scroll up. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, they also have alleged that uh, he had something that he had committed other crimes. But here we go with these people. I don't, I used to believe, and I, I feel like I want to make a public apology to um, Blagojevich, Blagojevich of Chicago, because I believed oh. that he was wrong, did wrong, because I thought, well, they wouldn't have arrested him. Right, uh, that's back when we thought there was some credibility to the FBI and the Justice Department. Yeah. Now we know better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, that, but that, you know, that's a little scary. And what they're trying to do is scare off whistleblowers. And right. I hope it doesn't work because I think we need more whistleblowers. And to me, if you have like Shapley, you have one person, but he says he, there are six other people who are willing to testify to the same things that he's bringing forward. The more whistleblowers you have who can testify to the same thing, the harder it's going to be for them to refute it. You can refute one person. I mean, who's the jury pool in this? You and me, basically. <laughs> I mean, what what are we gonna, guilty? <laughs> well, I know. Well, somebody said, you know, well, this is just a he said, he said. I, 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 I don't think so. I think this is, I don't trust anything that no, any of these It's a coup d'etat conspiracy, and these guys are all involved in trying to maintain it. Yeah, yeah. And you know that recently we saw Christopher Ray um, testifying before Congress about all of the missteps. I'm calling them missteps. I don't know of the FBI, all of the um, things that they did from the Russia collusion delusion to the laptop from hell to all this other stuff that they were involved in. And you know Christopher Ray is a weasel. I mean he is. He's just a weasel. And he is going to find a way to answer it without answering it or say he can't talk about it because it's still under, you know, um, investigation or whatever he says. And a lot of people have said, well, you know, what good is this going to do? I have noticed that the Republicans, when they're asking him these questions, they are putting out facts and they're making statements of fact. And they're saying, of course, this happened and that happened. And he says he doesn't agree with their characterization. He doesn't say it didn't happen. <laughs> you know, he's just saying, I don't agree with your characterization of that. And so, you know, I kind of liked what um, Harriet, uh, Representative Harriet Hageman had to say when she said to him, the FBI is not allowed to do indirectly what they're not allowed to do directly meaning you were using proxies to censor people. You were using Very good. social media to censor people. And, of course, he didn't agree with that characterization. And um, what I really wanted her to come back and say, well, how would you characterize it? 
you know, he, he kept arguing with Durham's report and they kept reading from Durham's report. So he's not going to be charged with perjury. I mean, and they're talking about impeachment. But but the thing is, is they are getting the truth out and they are making him answer some of these questions, which he gets squirmy. Yeah, his non-answers are, are pretty much an answer. Exactly. When he says, I wouldn't characterize it that way, he doesn't say, I'm sorry, that's a bold-faced lie. Right. He doesn't. Bubble, bubble, bubble. <laughs> it's like, well, that's not how I would say that. I wouldn't say that she's skinny. Well, your my word would be thin. You know, <laughs> it's like, what? It's skinny, thin. I don't know. Yeah, what's the difference? Right. It's like. Uh, Good example. So I appreciate what the Republicans are doing. And I, and I want to kind of take a minute. Um, you know more about this than I do, but. Uh, what? <laughs> I'm going to, I'm, I'll, I'll throw, get, get, throw it over to you in a second. One of the things that I hear a lot on social media, media is when are the Republicans going to impeach X, Y, Z, take your pick. Well, first of all, it's going to be really hard for them to do that because they don't have a very large majority in the house and they have quite a few rhinos who, have, in case you haven't been paying attention, have been voting with the Democrats on a lot of things. Also, we don't have a majority in the Senate, and we also have, oh, I don't know, I can think of one, at least Mitt Romney, a few others who probably would not vote um, to impeach, to have him, uh, Biden, or whoever removed. So they have, what's the point in bringing the impeachment if they know they're not going to have the votes? Well, the, very simple, and that, that's to bring out all these facts. I mean, at least the American public will be informed, even if they, the impeachment doesn't go through. It, it's probably better not to do an impeachment, though, if you know you're going to lose and just find another way to interrogate these people in a public forum. Which I think is what they're doing with all these investigations. You know, they're bringing out all this information so that we, the people, because, you know, the... The Russia, uh, the laptop from hell was not Russian disinformation. And so when all of that stuff comes out, and you know it isn't Russian disinformation because, hmm, Hunter Biden's attorneys have sued to get the laptop back. Well, it wasn't his laptop and it was Russian disinformation. Then how? what are you suing to get back? That's sort of. They didn't think that through. And also, yeah, too. There, there might be some stuff on that laptop that nobody's discovered yet. Well, also, too, <laughs> when people like to say, well, nobody can prove that they, he got the money or why the, you know, they were paid all this $5 million or whatever. Well, there again, uh, his attorneys put out a statement that the money was seed money for some adventure. But, you know, the Republicans have pointed out a number of times they have all these shell companies. They have all these companies that they can't they don't have a purpose. They're just LLCs. It's just this this constant obfuscation. Is that the right word? Obfuscation. Way to go. <laughs> I sometimes can't pronounce words very well. But at any rate, um, so there's that. Another interesting thing, and I have to laugh because this is a radio show, but maybe in our YouTube we could do something with this. The uh, Secret Service came out and announced that they um, cannot identify. There are no fingerprints on the bag of cocaine and the cameras, the cocaine was found. And, and we're back to the cubby again. Now it was found in the cubby. So we went from the cubby to the library to someplace. And now it's, it was found in the, in the cubby and, and the cameras, it was in a blind spot for the cameras. And I want to give us credit because last week on our show, we said that there might be an issue with the cameras, just like the Epstein <laughs> Bar syndrome, which you know, uh, Epstein Bar syndrome rages through video cameras this year. I'm telling you, there have all kinds of issues with these video cameras. I do not understand it. So they can't say that. And so the, some members of uh, Congress were briefed. Um, they had to go to a skiff to be briefed on this information. And Lauren Bobart, Robart came out and said, this is the third time they found drugs in the White House. Nobody knew about the other two. Hmm. The other two times it was marijuana. 
So we're we're moving up. We're going from marijuana to cocaine. Yeah, you move moving to the expensive part of town. The next thing you know, they're going to discover a meth lab in the basement of the White House. Oh, uh, heroin needles would be on. That would probably be the next step. The heroin needles, would if be, not fentanyl itself. Oh gosh, well that's a little bit scary. But you know, it, 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 that it, is scary, and that's a possibility. I mean, yeah. No camera coverage of a cubby. Oh, come on. Well, it was in the it was in the blind spot um, of the. No camera coverage in the blind spot. They must have known there was a blind spot. Well, what <clears throat> what concerns me? Maybe about... they directed the holder of the cocaine to the blind spot. Oh, they would. <laughs> you know, it it kind of bothers me on a lot of levels. But one of the things that concerns me is. Secret Service is really being thrown under the bus on this. I know one. this is to, to to tarnish their reputation is just despicable. It is despicable. They are about the only entity left that I trust, and but it's because they're not no three more. Left. But I, you know, no more because they're they're and this is terrible. This is sort of <laughs> difficult. But also, a lot of people are saying, "Well, it could have been anthrax." It could, no, that's not true. I don't know. They somehow, I mean, I guess it could be actually. No, I don't think Hunter could survive sniffing anthrax. Well, no, but I mean, <laughs> I mean, they're. T- <laughs> no. uh, I could say one more word, but I'm going to hold my tongue. <laughs> I, I wondering when somebody on the secret service is going to say, I'm not, I've had it and become a whistleblower themselves. So they're all mortgaged out to the max. I mean, to, to live in D.C. or anywhere close to commuting, it's just so expensive. Yeah. Well, anyway, we all know who. I mean, yeah. I'm surprised, though, they didn't come out and say Don Jr.'s fingerprints were found on the bag. <laughs> you know, and, and this is what I said. I've been putting this up on social media everywhere. Um, that if that had happened, if it if, you know, if it, this had happened during the Trump and when Trump was in the White House, you know, I, we talked about this. It's kind of doesn't play on radio, but that scene from the Griswold Christmas with Chevy Chase, where the SWAT team shows up and they burst through all the windows and they're up on the roof and they're coming in. Santa Claus, Santa Claus, right Santa Claus. Santa Claus, Santa Claus, Santa Claus. Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane. He's got a bag that's filled with toys for boys and girls again. Here goes sleigh bells, jingle jangle, oh, what a beautiful So jump in bed and cover your head, cause Santa Claus comes tonight. <laughs> You know, <laughs> where's Trump? <laughs> where's Trump? <laughs> you know, Don Jr. Or, or Eric or Baron or whoever. I mean, they would, that would be the scene. And I, I played that about five times. I was just laughing. I thought that's exactly. I just wish somebody, and I know somebody can do it, could Photoshop that scene and put the White House <laughs> instead of the Griswold <laughs> House and show them doing that because. That's really a funny scene. Yeah, it's a funny movie, but it's a funny scene in the movie. And the FBI, the infamous FBI, this report came out just recently that they worked with Ukraine intelligence um, to pressure big tech to censor Americans and journalists who were expressing dissent to the po- Biden policy in Ukraine. So now we are, the FBI is working with these a foreign intelligence agency, Ukraine, who is, we know that you, there's nothing corrupt in Ukraine. I mean, <laughs> certainly it's one of the, right? The trifecta, Biden, Ukraine, and China. As a side note, Roseanne Barr is actually re- Ukrainian and she's kind of a person who, but her entire family was killed by the Ukraine 
We were trying really? To... Huh. Yes. I didn't yes. know that. Yes. You are the keeper of odd knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, you know, it's only because she's talking about it recently, and I was interested in that. But so, yeah, I mean, the Ukrainian government doesn't have a stellar reputation. Roseanne but... Barr followed me on my other channel. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. And, and, and she's, you know, I mean, she knows what she's talking about when it comes to this. But um, in, in any case, that, that, that fact may not have come out during the hearing. And so nobody asked him about that. Um, but did you know that Chris Ray, the FBI director, was uh, compliments of Chris Christie? Thank oh. you, Chris Christie, oh. for him. Us. Another black mark, although yeah. none is needed at this point. Yeah. He'll never yeah. erase what he's got. Yeah. It, I, I did watch, I didn't watch all of it, but I did watch some of the hearing and it was very interesting to see one of, um, one of the reps, Troy Nels, who I don't know exactly where he was, but at one point he just began saying, shame on you. Good. And um, to who? Christy to, or Ray? To Chris Ray uh, over the January 6th. And he, he, he caught him in some lies, of course. It's not going to go anywhere. Um, <laughs> Beth, Beth's having an episode for those of you on the radio right now. <laughs> well, we can edit this out. <laughs> no, why? This is too much fun. We're having some fun. Yeah. <laughs> that's oh. jumping around kind of like like that uh that hawk that was chasing her the other day <laughs> and that was interesting yeah you know that was kind of i had an interesting day yesterday would you please just scroll up oh scroll up oh my god i didn't know what you were talking about okay where, where are you on here right there right let's put this at the top yay so you can just yeah Okay. <laughs> Chinese hackers breached the U.S. government email through Microsoft Cloud. I wonder if Microsoft made it softer. <laughs> but anyway. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought that right away. But yeah, now that you mention it, that might be a possibility. Well, I don't know. Has Biden got any money or given money to Microsoft? I don't know. I don't know. It's probably the other way around. Yeah, well, that's what I, you know, I'm wondering. Anyway, according to the New York Times, the hack by Chinese group that the company said was intent on conducting espionage went undetected for a month. But, 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 however, uh, <clears throat> we have to, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it because it only affected unclassified systems. It did not affect classified systems. So we can all breathe a sigh of relief that the Chinese didn't get any classified information. Oh, they don't need any. Biden, the Bidens have provided. Yeah. Well, th th that's exactly right. And I think that an unclassified email information thing, probably they only had to pay a million for that, not five million. <laughs> what we think. I mean, it's cheaper. I don't, I don't think they got that much money for access to top secret information. <laughs> well, anyway, I just, you know, you just, you can't. I, it's just, it's, it's so discouraging to have, after all the stuff that you have to go through to, to get a clearance and yeah. uh, to work in a cleared space and all that stuff. And then just to have it. Yeah. turn to mush you know in a, a few couple short years yeah 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 um in another note which is interesting to me i guess um a member of georgia's state legislature yeah yeah her name is misha mayner misha mayner yes and she has left the democrat party she has become a republican as she says the party of lincoln she says that the Democrats have crucified her for daring to come out for school choice, which is really important to African-Americans and what would be important to me if I had children in school, 
but because it gives them an opportunity to get out of failing schools and go to the school of their choice. Right, which is a big deal for her because she represents the, some of the poorest sections of Atlanta. And so her constituents would be way interested in, you know, getting a better education for their kids. And the other issue that they crucified her on, these are her words, were was um, defunding the police. She does not want to defund the police. <laughs> Imagine that. Which is another issue that greatly affects uh, people in poorer neighborhoods because that's where a lot of crime happens. Right. And so, you know, she was she came to the conclusion that a lot of African-Americans have come to.